What's the temperature outside? Uh, I think it's 22. 22? Well, good morning, guys, from the edge of Lake Powell. It's uh, 5.30 in the morning, and I am here at Up Lake Adventures. And as you can see, we're about to go on a sea do send. This is the first time I'm gonna have ridden the Explorer Pro in fresh water, and we are gonna be exploring all of Lake Powell with a little overnight camping trip. Now, this is not only the first time I've ridden in fresh water, it is also the first time that I've ridden when it is below zero. That is ice on my seat. It's cold. Right now, it's about 22 degrees Fahrenheit. It's chilly. So what we're gonna do is pack up the skis. There's gonna be seven of us, and we're gonna head down to the marina, get them in the water, see if we can get in before sunset, and then go and explore the beauty that is Lake Powell. Well, there we go, locked and loaded. Basically, we've got cot bed, clothes and things are in here, food, cooking, that kind of stuff is in there, anchors here, two things of extra fuel, and then all of my uh, sleeping bag and everything uh, is here in the front. So this is gonna be a long ride, about 260 miles over two days, with camping out the side of the lake as well in, uh, pretty chilly conditions. So I am so stoked to finally be getting out and doing some real adventure stuff on the Explorer Pro. Holy moly, this is a much longer launch ramp than Newport. Whoa. Guys, can you see the orange glow on my face? Well, that is because the sun is officially coming up. Oh my God, look at it. I am so excited. I've wanted to ride Lake Powell for so long. Uh, you've all seen the videos online of people riding sea dudes through those like crazy, like slot canyon things where it's super narrow and there's these big sandstone walls. Oh, and we get to do that. The next 48 hours, that is the only thing on my agenda. So if you guys didn't know, BRP is the company that owns sea -Doo. They also own ski -Doo, which is the snowmobile company. And because we're in such cold conditions, they've sent me this epic snowmobile outfit to ride. So this is the first time that I'm gonna be riding the sea -Doo wearing like normal clothes or kind of normal clothes. I like the Michelin man. But how sick is this with the neon yellow, got ski -Doo on the arm there. I love it. This is honestly, when I, this arrived, this is such good quality. It's probably the best clothing I actually own and it is so toasty. You guys do this too? You like lock something and then go, did I lock it? Yeah, did it. Isn't that weird how when you put a key to your head, it makes the signal go further? I don't know what it does to your brain, but definitely means you can lock your car from further away. I told you guys that 2023 was gonna be a big year and I know it's not even 2023 yet, but this kind of adventure is what I'm planning to do a ton more of. So keep tuned to this channel. If you aren't subscribed and you're into this kind of adventure stuff, please do subscribe. So I'd love to see you here again and uh, bring you along on these epic trips. So I'm not even gonna wear my big gloves because honestly, it's not that cold, which is surprising. <laughs> Look at my little wind muffs. This is so funny. <laughs> oh, we're doing it! We are on Sea Doos, on Lake Powell, at sunrise. So I'm wearing this. I just had to dunk my hand in because I lost my hat. I had it on forwards with the hood up and then all of a sudden it just went So I saw it and it was like this far under the water. And I was like, that is my only sea -Doo hat. So I grabbed it, now I've got a wet hand. So Mike, who's one of the guides, was just telling me that uh, there's a guy in California that owns uh, two big trucking companies. So he owns the biggest houseboat out here. And he said that he flies in on a helicopter. And if he can't land on the roof of his houseboat on the helicopter, then he has a floating helipad that he can use. Look at that, it's called Nightline. And uh, apparently that is $8 million worth of houseboat. <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! Just glass! So, uh, Adam, who is from the actual television, just gave me this! 
toasty. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God. How is this for a little place to stop? The guys are having a fish over there. Obviously I don't fish, so I'm just kind of hanging out, just enjoying the scenery. We are essentially in the Grand Canyon. When you are on a tiny little PwC and you have a huge slab of rock like that behind you, it makes you feel very insignificant in the best possible way. I think this is probably the biggest collection of Explorer Pros in the world right now. So I had one of the first four that were ever made and then uh, Bob got the first six production skis. So what you see here are the first six explorers, seven, in the wild. And could there be a more cool place to ride them? So I do this with every pair of riding gloves that I have. I cut a little slice in the thumb and that means you can pop your thumb out and then you can use your phone and it helps me when I'm using my cameras and stuff. So these are actually my brand new gloves from Jet Tribe. So in 2023, and officially a Jet Tribe ambassador. They do really nice stuff. These gloves are super nice. They got the little sticky fingers from the throttle and uh, on the brake and reverse. Uh, yeah, super comfy, but um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put a little cut in this so that I can get my thumbs through and use my phone. Although the balloon killer has seen better days. You guys have been telling me to uh, check out the um, Spyderco salt knife. If you're watching from Spyderco, you wanna send me one of your salt knives, that would be great, because mine just get trashed. There we go. This one isn't a knife that I usually carry on the sea do but uh, the blade should be a bit sharper. There we go. Ta -da! Look at that, perfect. Now, I can get my phone. And I can do my texts and my emails. Although there is zero service out here, so I won't be doing any at this point. Look how clear it is here. We're in seven feet of water. It is crystal clear. I'm sure there's gotta be places around here where you can dive and you know, there's stuff to see. A lot of it's just gonna be the rock falling off and just going straight down into the, uh, the lake, but I bet you there's some spots where there's some like sunken boats or whatnot. Well, I guess if those guys are over there having fun fishing, we might as well have fun over here. Eww. So this right here is called Driftwood Canyon and uh, the guys are all gonna wait for me and they've said to go through and I'm gonna get that like shot that you see of people riding through these things nice flat water and uh yeah just sandstone everywhere so let's go oh my god no way look at this oh my god This is unreal. I, I don't know if it goes any further. There's like a lot of brown scum, so I don't really want to suck that up. I don't know if it goes around any further than this, but this is wild. Look at this. 
I feel like I'm riding on another planet. I feel like I'm on Mars. Oh! Oh! I've got to do it, haven't I? Can I get a high, yeah? That's it. Yeah, so this is the dead end. Wow. Nature is so cool. Do you guys like this hat? I kind of like it. It's kind of hard to articulate just how, like, breathtaking, but also just how, like, monumental all of the scenery is here. Like, everything is so big and so grandiose and so beautiful. It's, uh, honestly, it's, it's breathtaking. And I get to ride it for a job. Like, what? How did that happen? I mean, like, look, look up there. Like that huge, huge mountain, cliff, bluff, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So we're heading to an ice cave. Apparently there's a little rock up here where the ice or the water has dripped down and uh, formed a little ice sheet. Check this out. So as the water's all come running through, it's frozen and caused these little icicles. That is beautiful. Check out this huge landslide that's happened. Whoa. I mean, this must have been huge because these are all pieces of that. God, that must have been mega. This was a while ago though, because you can actually see the high tide marks. You see where it's white. So you can see where the water level used to be. And uh, obviously this has all fallen down since then. So this has been down for a while, but ooh. That's terrifying. I would not want it to be around when that came down. Look at the size of that boulder. Alrighty, we're officially in need of fuel. Quick splash and dash, top her up, and we'll get on our way again. Oh, I also just installed a bilge pump. For whatever reason, let's say I was to hit something or there was to be a hole in the hull and it started to take on water, I have this little guy that I can turn on and it'll pump water out. And then it actually spurts out this little nozzle. You can't really see it's behind this bag, but back here, and then I have a hose that can go in that'll push it over the edge. It's one of those things that you never want to have to use, but it's always good to have, especially for my ocean stuff. Out here, it's not so bad because, you know, worst case scenario, you're going to swim to shore. It's really not that far. But when you're 17 miles offshore and there's great whites, it's nice to have that security. Glug, glug, glug. Drink up. Is that it? You all done? Ah. Oh. Done. Still got a full one. Whoa! Now this is a cave. Look at how the water is all dripping through. I wonder if that's actually going through the bedrock. The shapes are amazing. All the patterns. feels better we got some fuel so the ski took 18 gallons and then four gallons in the uh the extra caddy on the back so that means that i've got a full tank plus eight gallons on there as well i think after this we're gonna go find somewhere to camp for the night because in the morning we'll come back down we'll do another splash and dash and then we'll have enough to get ourselves all the way back to the marina so i'm going to find a hat because this is great and it's warm but it blows and then this lifts up and then it tries to come off my head 
So apparently they sell beanies. So this nice lady has uh, offered to give me a lift up to the petrol station. Okay, Lake Powell Marina. This is the lodge. So hopefully we can find me a beanie. Ooh, look at that. Oh, even got Lake Powell on it, that's cute. I like it, it's all. Oh, it's gonna be 23.55. Mission accomplished. Thank you very much. So, what was your name? Uh, Kelly. Kelly, Adam, nice to meet you. Thank you for chauffeuring me. Oh, guys, I feel so good about having this beanie. You do not understand. Oh, yes, we are in business, mate. Covers my little ears, covers my forehead, and then I can pull this up like this. <laughs> I'm such a moron. I got all of the gear that I could get to stay warm and forgot a bloody hat. This'll do. Yeah, I mean, this is fun. Yeah. This'll be perfect. We can just beach the skis right here. This is where we're gonna camp. I can't believe we're doing this. This is amazing. Is this the one? This is it, all right. So number one was not good enough for us. This is what we're going for. So we got beach here for the skis. Nice little flat bit, rocks, some stuff to look at, more stuff to look at. And when the sun comes up in the morning, we should get it relatively early. Is this sand right here? Yeah. Yeah? Touchdown. One, one, two, three. <gasps> Oh, nice. That grab bar. Look at that for a product shot. <laughs> Is this what they meant when they built these? Is this what it's for? Exactly. I think it is. So this is it, base camp for the night. All the skis are pulled up. I think we're just gonna put the tents sort of up on here on this rock. What an amazing place. And so this is perfectly legal. You can just come and pull up and camp wherever you like. Yeah, wherever you want. And so far today on the lake, we have seen one other boat. It was two guys in a little dinghy and that was like three hours that way. We are basically the only people out here. So that is it, camp is officially set up and uh, this might be one of the most spectacular places I will have ever slept overnight. The guys are just down there prepping the fish that they caught for their dinner and uh, have my little cooking station there. Got my chair, so as you can see, a uh, very luxurious cot, a uh, nice sub-zero sleeping bag, a little sleeping pad and uh, inflatable pillow. So I think I will be very, very cozy in there. And yeah, just kind of decompressing because it has been a long, but very, very enjoyable day. We're just gonna hang out here tonight. We're gonna make a fire and just enjoy the evening and then no rush in the morning, watch the sun come up, pack the skis, and then we're actually gonna go a little bit further north to the very, very end of the lake as far as we can go and then come back. But today has just been amazing. And the first time that I've actually done like a true expedition on the Explorer Pro. And I am blown away by how competent it's been, how much gear I've been able to bring. I mean, it's been nuts. I've got so much stuff on there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think I've got it about 80% dialed in terms of like a camping setup that I can just throw on there and take with me. There's a couple of things that I would like to add and modify, but considering this is my first ever sea camping trip, I think I nailed the, uh, the little setup that I've got. So very proud of myself for that. The windscreen was awesome as well. Like I said before, on the ocean, I don't get to use it very much because I'm always standing, but on this flat, oh my God, you sit back, you put your feet out in front of you you just cruise and it is so comfy and everybody here has loved this trip so far so <clears throat> yeah i'm just gonna wait till the sun goes down cook some food hang out and that's it so i'll check back with you guys in a minute i've come down to 
the water for a wee, but look at that. I was just saying to one of the guys, this is the first time in months, honestly months, that I have been totally off grid. I have no mobile phone service here. And all I have to do is sit and just enjoy where I'm at. It's silent, like there's not a breath of wind. It is just so tranquil. And honestly, I forgot how important it is to have moments like this. Because when you're just on that treadmill, constantly just onto the next thing, always something new. And don't get me wrong, I love what I do, but it's just non-stop, you know? And so even just to be able to take one night to just relax, do nothing, have absolutely nothing on my mind because there is nothing I can do. It's bliss. guys well it's eight o'clock and uh, that means it is bedtime so I'll see you guys in the morning well good morning guys welcome to the banks of Lake Powell at sunrise sun should just be peeping up over this mountain here behind me very shortly. I had a great sleep, first time I've slept in a tent in years and the first time that I've used all of my new camping stuff and I was surprised considering that it got down to like probably low 20s last night, I was very very toasty. It's a little bit weird getting you sleeping in a single bed and in a mummy bag where you're all kind of like strapped in but after a couple of hours I definitely got comfy. The Explorer Pros are here looking pretty, they didn't go anywhere overnight which is good. I actually anchored mine, uh, put the anchor into the sand right here just to make sure that it didn't go anywhere. But uh, the beauty of a lake is that there really isn't much tide unless they're letting water in or there's snow melt. And right now there's neither of that. So we knew they were gonna stay where they were. And um, yeah, we're just gonna make some tea. We got the fire going back there and wait for everybody to wake up. And then we're gonna make our way up lake. We're gonna go all the way to where the lake begins so that we can truly say that we rode from the south to the north and back again, and we completed the whole lake. Alrighty, we are back on the skis, but we still have camp over there. So we're gonna come back in a little bit, break down camp once it gets a little bit warmer. So for now, we're just gonna head out and we're gonna go all the way to the top of the lake. Just enjoy this gorgeous morning light. Just peeking around the corner up there. Ah. Good morning, guys. Oh my God, it's ice. Look at this. Okay, so this just officially became the coldest weather I have ever ridden a sea doo in. There is ice on the top of the lake and it's uh, 62 feet deep here. Wow, that's wild. So I don't know how far we can go because obviously we don't want to run the risk of it getting thicker up there. Mike's doing his best uh, icebreaker attempt. So it may look like it's not that cold because it's sunny and there's like desert rocky mountains around me, but trust me, it is. <laughs> okay, well now that I've done this, I'm thinking that we need to go to a proper icy place. Like imagine going out on the sea dews on a fjord in Iceland or something like that. That sounds like fun. I'll tell you what I really wanna do that's on my bucket list, is I wanna go free dive that area in Iceland between the tectonic plates where you've got one here and one there, and it is crystal clear, freezing cold, but crystal clear. That's on my bucket list too. 
but definitely taking the sea to somewhere like snowy and mountainous. Maybe we could go up to Canada, do something up there. That would be a lot of fun. So if you want to come and do a trip like this, you don't actually need your own ski. Obviously I've got mine and I bought it out, but Bob, who runs Up Lake Adventures, this is what he does. This is his job. So if you want to come out and you want to ride sea doos he also has like the Can-Am side-by-sides as well. Um, so he's a real like one-stop shop for adventure stuff out here around the Grand Canyon and here on uh, Lake Powell. Uh, you can come out and he'll take you out and do these camping trips. He has all the gear, everything you need. So literally you just show up, pay your money and get on the ski and then he'll take you and do whatever you want. Um, and they do pretty decent groups. I think they can take like eight. I want to say he's got eight skis in total. Um, so there's a good opportunity to get a group of friends together and come out and do this sort of stuff. It runs all the way through the year as well. So if you don't fancy doing it in the cold, you can come and do it in the summer. And he was saying in the summer when they camp out, they literally just camp on cot beds with a sleeping bag. No tent, no nothing, just under the stars, campfire. Sounds absolutely amazing. So I'll definitely be coming back in the summer to join them. But yeah, this, doing it in the winter, I like to push myself a little bit. I like to challenge myself. And so doing this has been a lot of fun. And honestly, it really hasn't been that difficult in terms of dealing with the cold. Yesterday when my hat blew off and then I had a cold head because I forgot to bring a beanie with me, that sucked for like an hour or two. But as soon as I got this, well, even when I was wearing Adam's hat that he lent me, it made the world a difference. Um, but now that I've got all the right gear, you know, sunglasses, hat, the little buff to come over your face. I mean, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And then obviously the windshield here. So it really is a very pleasurable experience. And last night I slept incredibly well, all things considered. So one thing I didn't expect to see on this trip would be Mike ice fishing. This is wild. Bizarro. <laughs> it's getting thick now though. Yeah, it is getting thick. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent slab. Yeah, this is probably getting too thick to break through, Bob. That's uh, that's an inch thick. I don't think we should push through this. I think we'll break break the skis. Look at it cracking as the wave hits it. So we have a water temperature gauge right here and none of them are working because it's so cold. But I mean, while we're here, it'd be rude not to do a couple of little ice donuts, right? Sorry, you guys weren't trying to fish here, were you? <laughs> oh, bring the vegan on the fishing trip. What a great idea. So they say that the first race happened after the second car was built. And we have two Explorer Pros here and two people who definitely enjoy racing. So we're going to see which one's the fastest. This was one of four of the first ever made. So this is actually a prototype unit. If you take the seat off, it says prototype on it. These are the first production models made. I don't think that'll make a difference, but there's only one way to find out. Are you in sport mode? I'm in sport mode. Okay, stand by. I'm gonna start with my trim down, and then when I get on plane, I'm gonna trim it up. Yeah. So you're starting with nose down? Nose down, and so then you get up on plane sooner. And then and nose. Then you, then you plane the nose up to oh. get more speed on the top end. Well, I'll tell you what then, you do that, I won't. I'll okay. keep it. Right. plane up okay. like nose up the whole time all right. so my vts here my nose is all the way up and we'll see if that makes a difference place your bets ladies and gentlemen oh look at the stance this man means business <laughs> all right then ready three two one go So just to make it fair, we've got to do it downhill now. And I'm going to try that plane trick. Uh, yeah. See, that, that's why you won. That's the, 
You did. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Seems like once they get going, they're the same. Yeah, but I yours think they is. Both top out at about 54. I think so... it's your hand warmers that's slowing you down. Oh yeah, there you go. That's yeah. it. It's the yeah. drag. Exactly. Of course, that's yeah. what it is. So we just came for a ride down this little slot canyon. And there's this little frozen water flow here and it's actually freezing on the water itself so 46 degrees where i am here but just there is all ice Alrighty, well I guess it's time to tear down the camp and uh, pack everything up on the ski because we have got about 130 miles, I think, to go back the other way. So camp is officially broken down and for the record, I hate packing tents. It's the worst thing in the world. The only thing worse than packing a tent away is emptying a dishwasher. Isn't it wild that I can get all of this, plus a bit more actually because I've still got stuff actually on the sea doo but all of this is going to go on there. So we've got clothes, toiletries, uh, and a few other bits and bobs in there, some chargers and stuff. All of my cooking stuff, pots, pans, little stove, and everything, food is in there. That is just like a general dry bag for just stuff. That's all my sleeping stuff. That's my cot bed. That's for sitting. And that's a cup of tea. And all of that goes on there. Uh, but yeah, so I think we've just got a couple more things to pack up, and then we're going to book it and start heading back down the lake. Goodbye, campsite. It was a pleasure. What a wonderful, wonderful place to spend the evening. And now, 100 and something miles back to the truck. That was pretty wild. We just rode all the way from camp to Bullfrog Marina here where the fuel dock is, wide open, 8,000 RPM. I didn't let off the throttle once. And we did about, I don't know, 20 miles maybe? That was nuts. I've never ridden that thing wide open for that long. I burnt through probably a third of a tank of fuel doing it, but it was a lot of fun. So we're gonna do a fill up here. My two jerry cans are full, so I don't need to put any more in those. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take it a little bit slower to get back because it's a bit further. Well, it's a lot further. Oh, I didn't lift my fucking lever. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Mine says 14 cents, but it's not running. All right, so some drama at the fuel dock. They're out of fuel. And we are over 100 miles from the launch ramp and I burnt 24 gallons from the launch ramp to here yesterday to fill up. I was on fumes when I got here. I have eight gallons on the ski and I have no gallons in the ski. So we gotta figure that one out. Okay, so 
fuel is right there. That is as much as I can physically fit in. So between everybody's skis, we had enough in the uh, auxiliary tanks, the little caddies on the back, to pretty much get everybody topped off and we've still got some spare. Now, everyone made it here, apart from me, on the tank of gas that they had in the ski. So we should be absolutely fine. But this is a perfect example of why it's so important to bring extra fuel with you on trips like this, because you can't take it for granted that you're gonna be able to fill up where you think you are. And so that's why when I do the Catalina trip, I always make sure that I've got enough to do the trip twice on the ski. I can get there and back on a tank of fuel, but I also carry an extra eight gallons every time I go, just in case the fuel dock in Avalon was shut or something like that. And this, this is exactly the reason why. So this just became less of a fun cruise back where we're gonna to get to stop and look at some more canyons and became more of a, we need to get back before the sun sets trip. So I now have a pretty much a full tank of fuel. Uh, it's showing on my dash 81 miles. It'll go up once I start riding, but it's a hundred miles back to where we need to go. So I am literally gonna be getting in there by the skin of my teeth. Now we do have three extra tanks of fuel to go between everyone. So fingers crossed we make it. Did it just turn that quickly? That was wild. Is my hat inside out? That's how windy it was. Blew my bleeding hat inside out. I was cruising along, sat down, just, you know, one-handed, do 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 50 behind the windscreen, then all of a sudden, just boom, we hit that massive windy patch. And there was like tornadoes on the top of the water. The wind was swirling through that bad. That was insane. But being an ocean rider, that is what I'm used to. So I've managed to put myself about five miles ahead of the guys already. Uh, I thought they were closer than they are, but I'm like probably three miles down this straightaway and I can't even see them. So I'm gonna wait here, I need a wee. 
uh, let them catch up a little bit and then cruise on. Uh, I'm the one that's the most likely to need extra fuel. So I figured that if I get ahead of them, at least that way, if I do get to the point where I need it, I can just stop and wait for them to catch me up rather than be the guy at the back. Cause I've been cruising in sort of eco mode uh, and they've all been getting ahead of me. So this seems like a nice place to have a wee. So in the middle of all of that, I did manage to lose a dry bag, which is annoying. Uh, the, I had it like basically strapped really tight under here. Uh, and then I also had uh, it clipped, but the little buckle on the dry bag itself was broken. And so I think what happened is just with all of that bouncing, I mean, there were some big hits. I think it just broke loose. It had my hoodie in it, which I'm really annoyed about because I don't have many of those left. And uh, it also had one of Bob's camping chairs. So I owe him a camping chair. Still can't see the guys. I would have thought they would have been coming around the corner by now. But the thing is, if you're not used to that type of riding, it batters you, absolutely batters you. Uh, I mean, even for me, I would say that that's probably in like the top five worst conditions I've had to ride in. Basically, it was probably four or five foot high swells, but it was literally every like four feet. So you would just come off one and then bang into another one, bang into another one. So it really beats you up. Oh, here we go. Here they come. All right, let me get the ski started. Otherwise, we're gonna overtake it again. Next week, he asks, which troubles do you see? Your heart is the root of all weed. I bowed my head and hid my eyes, but it shook me out of my disguise and said, you by two of the guys. I've no idea how they caught me up as fast as they did. But uh, anyway, we're back here at Hua Weep, Hua, Hua Weep Marina. And uh, just gonna pull the ski out now. Ooh, you can feel that temperature dipping now the sun's gone in. What a bloody awesome, awesome, awesome ride. I'll do a recap once I'm off the ski, but wow, I just went through every possible scenario riding this thing on the way back then and it was bloody fantastic well hello everybody uh today is the day after you last saw me so i'm now driving back from lake powell and uh, i'm somewhere just outside of las vegas which is back that way about an hour uh, and I saw this crazy graffitied abandoned building and so I decided that this would be a great place to stop and do my outro. Uh, what an epic trip. I honestly haven't had that much fun in a long time. I haven't been on an adventure like that in a long time and it certainly will not be long before I do something like that again because it was so much fun. I can't believe all of the things that I got to see, the experience of just being able to get out there, be totally off grid, not have anything else to do other than just enjoy the moment that I was in was so, so needed. And I think it's easy to forget sometimes that it's important to take those little breaks, even if it is just 24 or 48 hours and just get off grid relax don't even have to think about anything in your day to day and just get that reset uh because yeah as much as i am exhausted because i've been waking up before 5 a.m every morning for the last four days and getting very little sleep in between uh yeah it was so much fun and i'm going back home now feeling replenished rejuvenated i'll feel even better after a good night's sleep but just a brilliant experience. Explorer Pro goes without saying, absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, just really proved what CD set out to do with these things and the adventures that they can unlock. And I can't wait for more. I'm gonna definitely go do some more stuff with Bob as well at Uplake Adventures. Uh, they also have some Upland Adventures where they go out in Can-Ams, which are the side-by-side, -side, like the four by four buggies. So we'll go out and do that in the summer. And we'll also go back to Lake Powell again and we'll go and see what it's like when it is warm and we can do some diving. We can get in the water and really enjoy it. So anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it because I certainly have. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because I would love to see you here again. Please like this video, give it a thumbs up. That helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing, which is really sucking at the moment. So anything you can do to like this video, share it with your friends, leave a comment below, really helps out and keeps me moving towards that million subscriber goal. 
We hit 100,000, next is a million. So guys, remember, until next time, don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya.